Hello and welcome to 2.1 Motion in Two Dimensions. This is the start of Chapter 2 and Chapter 2 is all about two-dimensional motion. In Chapter 1 we looked at how to solve problems using acceleration all in one direction. So forwards, backwards, up, down, but we always stayed in one dimension. And now we're looking at combining two dimensions. So this lesson here is going to be talking about one way to solve two-dimensional problems, which is to use scale diagrams. Now, before we get started, we need to talk a bit about how we talk about directions and, and uh, how we describe motion in two dimensions. So we use a compass, and hopefully you remember that compasses have four directions, north, south, east, oops, east, and west. And um, the abbreviation we often use for that is NEWS, North, East, West, and South. That makes it easy to remember. Okay, and so a compass rose is a cross that shows directions. And if you look below, I'm just going to write below here, if you look below we have two examples of compass roses ba down here. So that's a compass rose. It's um, a shape that shows all the different directions that things can be pointing in. Okay, and the other thing we're using here is a Cartesian grid, which is if I draw just something like this. That's our Cartesian grid. And when we draw one of those, we make it line up with a, comp a compass by saying that north is in the positive x direction, um, east, sorry, in the positive y direction, east is positive x, we, uh, south is negative y, and west is negative x. Okay, so up, down, left, right, hopefully that makes sense. Now we can have angles between north, east, west, and south, and if, we wanna, if I want to write, write an angle that's part way between north and east, I could write, for instance, east 20 degrees north, or I could write north 70 degrees east, etc. Now notice that east 20 degrees north, that means I'm starting going east and I go 20 degrees to the north. That's the same as saying north 70 degrees east. So there's two different ways of writing that same direction. Okay, so that's what we're talking about here. We've got our compass roses, and you can see that we have north, east, south, west. And then between north and east, we have northeast, southeast, southwest, northwest. And you can see that it even sort of gets more specific. We can say north, northwest, this sort of thing. But generally in this class, we're going to be using angles. So on this picture to the right here, this is an example of east 20 degrees north. So you can see that we started going east, we went 20 degrees up in the north direction. And notice how the, that's written. It has square brackets around the, the direction. So we've got a couple directions down here, and we're just going to sketch them out. So south 15 west, I've made my Cartesian grid, and south 15 west looks like this, with 15 degrees here. East 63 south, east 63 south, that means I have an angle here 63 degrees and north, 85 west. Well, that means we're almost all the way to west, north, 85 west. This is 85 degrees. So that's how we sketch out those sorts of directions. Okay, so for, these, um, for this lesson, we're going to be looking at scale diagrams and how to use scale diagrams to solve two-dimensional problems. So a scale diagram is an accurate drawing of a situation. And notice that I've said that it's accurate. That means that I need to have a proper scale and that everything is drawn correctly. So a scale is a ratio between the size of your drawing
and the size in real life. So an example would be one centimeter to ten kilometers. That's an example of a scale. I could say that for every one centimeter that I draw, it corresponds to ten kilometers in the problem. Okay, and the final term here is resultant vector. This is the result of adding vectors. So let's just go ahead and try one of these problems. It says draw a scale diagram of a displacement vector of 41 meters east 15 degrees south. So for this you need your ruler and you need your protractor. And if you don't have a protractor already you're going to need to go out and get one because this, um, this lesson requires one and you'll be required to do this on the test as well. Okay, so I have my protractor and my ruler, and I'm just going to make my protractor a bit smaller here. Oops, let's see here. Just make my protractor smaller. I'm still getting the hang of using these things. Let's see here. Okay, I guess I won't make it smaller because I'm not sure how to do that. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Okay, that's a bit smaller. So, I have my protractor, I have my ruler, so first off, I want to find an angle of 15 degrees. So the way I can do that is I can draw a dot at the start of my, um, of my line, so that's going to be, I'll draw a dot where I want my line to start. I want my line to start right here. Okay, and then what I want to do is line up my protractor with that dot. So there I've got the crosshair of the protractor lined up with that dot. And now I'm going to mark off, so that's 0 degrees. I go all the way down to 15 here. This is 15. And I just want to put a little tick mark at that 15 degrees. So I'm going to put a little mark there at 15 degrees. And then I take my ruler and I'm going to connect those two. So I need to get my ruler to line up with those two. And now I want it to be 41 meters long. So before I go any further, I need to establish a scale. I also need to establish what direction is north. So I'm going to draw a little north arrow here. And then I can say that my scale is, let's say, one centimeter to 10 meters. So that means if I want to do 41 meters, I'm going to draw a line that is 4.1 centimeters long. So I've got the zero lined up, and I just go in the right direction here, 4.1, and I draw an arrow at the end there. There's my scale diagram. Excellent. So if we go on to the next page, we'll do a couple more. So on the next page here now, we're going to actually look at adding vectors instead of just drawing a single vector. So we're going to be using the tip and tail, uh, the tip to tail method. And tip and tail refer to, so tip is the front of the arrow. So when I draw a vector, this is the tip, this is the tail tail is the back of the vector, or the back of the arrow. And when we add vectors, we use the tip to tail method. So what we do is we draw a scale diagram with vectors connected tip to tail. 
which means that the tail of the second vector will be touching the tip of the first one, and so on. That's our tip-to-tail method. So we'll try that in this first problem here. It says, a cyclist rides her bicycle 50 meters due east, and then turns a corner and rides 75 meters due north. What is her total displacement? So first off, we need to establish our direction. So we'll say up is north, and a scale. So I'm going to say again, one centimeter to 10 meters. Okay, and then we get out our ruler and protractor again. And I'll see if I can shrink this down again. Perfect. Okay, and I don't actually need the protractor for this one because I start by going east. So here I can take my ruler and have it pointing straight east. So I'm just going to put, I know I'm going to go east and then north, so I'm going to give myself lots of room and start off at the bottom here. So, let's see, I have my start point, I'll put a little dot here, and I'm going to go from there, so I've lined it up here, from that point, I'm going to go 50 meters east, so that's 5 centimeters, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, perfect, and so I'll draw my little arrow here, and I'll just use a second color for the second ver uh, vector, I'm going 75 meters due north. So, I'll get my ruler pointing straight up now. And I'm going to go 75 meters, so 7.5 centimeters. Something like this. 7.5, and, and that just fills up my page. Good. And I'll draw my arrow there. So those are my two vectors. And what I want to do is I want to find the total. So now I am going to need my protractor. Because what I'm doing here is I'm going to measure from the very start to the very end. And I need to get my ruler lined up so that I can measure this properly. That's looking pretty good to me. Just like this. So it looks like we're at about 8.9 centimeters. which means that that's going to be 89 meters. Good. And I'll draw that line here. Good. And I need to now actually find the angle of that line. So I'll get my protractor over here, line up the bottom corner. And now I want to see what angle this green line is at. So looks to me like it's, you can see, this would be 50 right here, and we're before 60, so we're at about 56 degrees. If you can see this marking right around there. So we're going to say 56 degrees. So we can say, therefore, the total displacement is equal to 89 meters and we need to say our direction. So we started off going east. We're turning towards north. So it's east 56 degrees north. And that's our final answer. OK, there's two more problems here. Uh, it says, while on a race, a sailboat travels a displacement of 40 meters north. The boat then changes direction and travels a displacement of 60 meters south 30 west. What's the boat's total displacement? So, I'm starting by traveling straight north. So again, I'm going to establish my direction and my scale. I'm going to use the same scale as before. I start by going straight north. Here we go. And it says I go north, and then I go back down south by quite a bit. So I'm just going to make sure that I have enough room here. I know that after I've traveled north, that's going to be the end of my journey. So I'm just going to put my, my trip looking something like, like this. I'll just draw a dot for where I'm starting. And now from there, I want to go up 4 centimeters 
bit more there, 4 centimeters. Good, and now I want to go south 30 degrees west. So I get out my protractor, line it up with uh, where the second vector is going to start, right there. And I need to turn this around so I can measure out south 30 degrees to the west. So that means that 90 degrees it would be straight south. So I'm going to go 30 degrees over from there. So that brings us over to this point. It says 120 on this protractor, or it might also say 60, but that's where I'm going to be going. So I want to put a little tick mark at that point here, 120 degrees. Okay, so that's south 30 degrees west. I take my ruler, and I'm going to change colors here. Now I, oop, now I want to line up my ruler with that point. And I think this is probably a bit easier in this case for you guys than for me because I have to work with this software here. Okay, perfect. So now I want to measure 60 meters. So that's going to be 6 centimeters. You can see that I'm lining up the 6 at the very end there so that I can do this and draw a full 6 centimeters. And notice that I'm trying my best to be correct with all of this but it's not a perfect way of doing these problems. So our answers are going to be, you know, a bit different if you measure it out versus how I measure it out. And that's part of the problem with this uh, method. Okay, so now our, our last step is to get the total. So I'm going to take my ruler again, line it up, And so you can see I'm looking at about 3.2. I'd say about 3.2 centimeters. Now, so I'm drawing my total vector. It goes from the start to the finish. So you see I've drawn it from the starting point all the way to the end. So that's about 3.2 centimeters, which is going to be 32 meters in our actual problem. So 32 meters, and now I take my protractor, I turn it around, actually I'm going to keep it turned this way. Okay, and so I want to make sure that it's starting perfectly level, left, right. I'm lining it up with the dot, and then I'm going to see what angle this green line makes with that uh, protractor. So you can see it makes about 20, let's say about 23, 24 degrees. So I'm going to say that that's about 23 degrees from the horizontal. And notice that I'm measuring from, I'm measuring from this line, this horizontal line. I'll just uh, make that a bit clearer here. I'm measuring from sort of a horizontal crosshairs here. Sort of a crosshairs that I could draw right there. So I want to get this angle here, and I said that that's about 23 degrees. Okay, and that's from this horizontal line. Alright, so there we go. That gives us our answer. It tells me that, um, therefore, the displacement is equal to 32 meters, and my direction here from the horizontal, that would be west, I'm going 23 degrees towards south. So west, 23 degrees south. And there we go. All right, there's one more problem there, and I'm going to leave that one for you to try doing. It says the squash ball goes from uh, a displacement of 6.2 meters west, 25 south, bounces off, and another displacement 4.8 west, 25 north. And it tells us the, how long the whole motion takes. So what you're going to do is find the total displacement, just like we've been doing above, and then the average velocity by dividing by time. So go ahead and try that problem, and um, you'll have time in class for the homework problems. I'll see you in the next lesson.